Back by Hobbies. So today we're going to talk about the drag strip. I have an idea for it. It's going to be involving removing the top layer of shelving, getting everything off the top of the shelves, getting everything off the second layer of shelves and putting them somewhere else, and then run the drag strip down the way. We're also going to be <laughs> making all the shelving the same. Uh, I have the, the ones like this style here underneath the racetrack. So we're going to be swapping in the smaller ones here into the racetrack and bringing those taller ones back out to do the wall here and whatever left over we'll be relocating ponies we'll be relocating rc trucks we'll be adding a drag strip in all right it's been a little bit of a puzzle play here i don't have enough shelves to replace them all but i can do the ends kind of in that manner so that it all kind of matches up the same so it has a little bit of a dip here now i'm going to try and do the other same thing on the other side that will allow me to uh continue down the the wall here with the drag strip There we go, we have the drag strip in place. That's what I really love about these modular shelves is that I can just set, you know, pull pieces out, Lego them together and use them for multiple things. Anything that I didn't use, I took off, are now new shelving that we're gonna put in areas of the house. Now that all this track is laid down, we gotta power it. So, I got two lifelike power uh, track pieces here. I got these in a Facebook auction marketplace. Uh, one of them standard, just like uh, the Tyco one and Marchin and probably FX. Uh, I'm going to modify the back of it so it only gives power to one side of the track. I'm going to do the same thing for this one, but do it to the opposite side. This one has controllers wired in. Uh, I can, When I'm in there, I can just desolder them, pull them out, and then I think I'll just make them uh, extensions and we'll use these as well. So we'll have red and black. These will both sit down here towards the end along with our dyno machine somewhere around here. Maybe we'll do it over here. Um, we can even pull the track forward a little bit, I think, too, and then put some grandstands behind it going down. We definitely got to do some scenery here. It's a lot of white. We got to cover that with all different mur murals and uh, pictures and things for the highway. Maybe connect the highway into the drag strip. I don't know. So many, so many possibilities here, it's crazy. So as you see on this Tyco piece here, I taped off the middle controller slot, so only this far side one works. And looking at the back of it, you can see that there's no power going to this rail here. And there's no power making it to this rail either because it's been snipped here and here. Thus only allowing this controller to work. So I'm going to copy it for this one here and do that now. Just grab your tin snips and snip away. There you go. Doesn't matter where you cut it. So they don't connect. So that matches one there and now I'm gonna snip this one right here on the, the jumper and there we go so now this rail does not have any power and this rail does not have any power but this rail does as does this one and this controller so just like the Tyco one here we're gonna block out the middle controller May have been better if I did this one first because I'd probably just uh, cut it right here where I cut the other one and not have to deal with this. On the other track, we took power away from the bottom rails of the piece. So now we're going to take it away from the top rails. So there is one connection point here that we're just going to pop up and relieve it so it doesn't touch there. I'm going to wrap it in black tape here. And then this will still feed power to the bottom rails. The other one is on the trigger here. We will disconnect the, the trigger as well. And so I'm just going to run that small screwdriver underneath the tin here, aluminum. And try not to damage it, but just pry it up from uh, the solder there. Alright, so while the soldering gun heats up, I am going to snip this wire here going to the, the other rail. There we go. I can also just desolder that. See what happens. So that worked. I got in there with some really small players and started prying and pulling up on it. And I was able to free it from the connection there. So I'm just going to wrap that in black electrical tape. And uh, we'll only have power to the bottom track now. Alright, so that got wrapped twice with black tape. 
and we should be good to go now. So testing the first slot here. It has power. I did not treat, clean any of this track. It all needs to be sanded down and uh, gone over, but full power. And now we'll check the other side. There we go. Oh, almost. So, <laughs> things to come. All right, so now that we have that taken care of, now we want to eliminate the wall wart. And to do that, we're going to wire in this uh, pigtail into the laptop power supply that has adjustable 12 to 24 volts. Remember, when you harvest, harvest from the block side. So you have a nice length of original cord if you want, and this way you don't see any uh, splice marks in the cord as it lays over the table, or, you know, we, we're going to try and hide it go down eventually, but for now. So from the pigtail you just cut off, take the two wires and split them. There we go. And now just strip off the ends. I strip a lot of wire so that I can wrap these really thin wires down and around them before soldering. So I checked over on the, the track over there how this was actually done and the wire that goes on top where the notch is on the power supply is the red one. On the Tyco uh, controller, the, 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 this piece had a red wire all the way through it. So on my pigtail adapter, I did the red wire to the wire that went to the top notch. So I'm just adding some flux to the wires. That will help the solder stick to it. I run my soldering gun at 325 degrees. I know what I didn't do. See, you caught me. I didn't do my heat shrink. All right, now my heat shrink is on. Gun is up to temperature. We're going to hit it with some solder here. And just dab it on. That looks good. I'm going to do the other wire exactly the same way. So as you see here, you should have something like this with the heat shrink around the red and white wires. And I'll just add some heat. Until that's all shrunk down. So for the size pigtail that I bought here, I found that the white adapter that, that comes with the laptop power supply is the best choice. It seems to fit really good. And now this just goes into our power cord. And now this just goes into our connector for the laptop power supply. Then take your out wall outlet cord. Um, I did have one of these come with a bad wall outlet cord. It took me a while to figure that out, but uh, put it in there. And now, uh, we see right here we are at 16 volts. Let's see if we have uh, 16 volts. Hopefully I did it in the right direction. Good. Now I'll just do one more of these again for the other side of the track. We want we can jack it up a full 24 volts. Whoa! <laughs> that had enough juice to make it. Let's do a run. So you saw the car struggle there when it was on 16 volts, but when it comes up to 24 volts, drag racing happens. <laughs> so we need 14 feet for a drag strip. So from the wall to there, following our tape measure, we are looking at 14 feet, right about here. It gives us 18 to the end, so we would have 4 feet of braking before hitting the wall of no return. 4 feet is right here. We gotta figure out how to slow these cars down once they're going here, how to, how to do this. And I have an idea. I can make a track adapter because instead of slamming into this cardboard box, maybe we just use it, the wall as a gravity brake and stop the cars. We'll put some foam up there on my pipe. And uh, I doubt they would even get, you know, this far here after going four feet. I could be totally wrong. We're gonna find out though, I tell you that. <laughs> So, that's right, we'll, uh, from here we'll use the truss, put the bank here, come up, up the wall and use gravity to help break and these, these parts of the track won't have power. So this is lifelike track here, this is 
Tyco uh, wall ramps here. We're gonna make an adapter now. We're gonna go from lifelike to Tyco. So I hope you like this video. Check out the description for a link to those laptop power supplies and for the pigtail connectors as well. Uh, coming up, we're gonna be doing that Tyco to uh, lifelike track adapter piece so we can do the gravity brake at the end of the, the track there. We'll have to do something with that window there, maybe put up some logos and uh, I guess that dress up this whole mural here. So, uh, look at the complete mess this made doing this. So now, and also we have to clean this track. Like it went down at 24 volts, but the track is really dirty. That's why I was having a problem at 16. So we'll get this all cleaned up. More to come, stay tuned everyone. Before we do that though, we gotta make sure this still works. <laughs>